Today's video is eight things to never do at the blackjack table. Okay, number one on our list of eight things to never do at a blackjack table is don't sit at a six to five blackjack table. Now, if you're not sure what six to five blackjack table is, Matt's going to explain it to you. So traditionally speaking, if you were playing blackjack and you were dealt a blackjack, which is an, an ace and a uh, 10 value card, you'd get a blackjack and you would be paid at three to two or three units for every two units that you're betting. And in layman's terms, that means for if you bet $10, you would win $15. At a six to five table, however, it's a little different. While the numbers are bigger and it sounds like it might be better, if you break down the math on it, it's really not. You get paid six units for every five units that you bet. So if you bet $10, you would only win 12 instead of $15 at a three to two table. Yeah, originally this started years ago at uh, uh, single deck games in, in Las Vegas. And, and people always sort of knew that a single, all things being equal, the rules being equal, single deck games are better for the player than multiple deck games. So people thought it was a better game, and yes, it is a better game, but not if they pay uh, six to five. Uh, if, on most blackjack games, if you use perfect basic strategy, it's around one half of one percent of the casino advantage. When they only pay a six to five, that adds 1.4 percent approximately to the casino edge. So instead of playing a game that is, uh, you know, about one half of one percent, you're playing a game that's almost two percent. So it's like four times higher by that one change. So you never want to play at a, uh, a, a blackjack table that pays six to five. Only play it once and pay three to two. And, and also, we have a video on this. Our, our good friend Henry Tamburin, who's an expert on blackjack, he did a video for us. So you can look for it on our channel, and it's called Why You Should Never Play Six to Five Blackjack Games. Number two on our list is don't play at a table with a continuous shuffling machine. Now, if you don't know what a continuous shuffling machine is, that's different from a regular shuffling machine that the dealers use. Say, if you're playing on a, a game with a six or an eight deck shoe, once the deck is done, they take all the cards, and then a little thing pops up. They put the cards in, it goes down, and the other side pops up. They take out the new uh, set of cards, put those in the deck after they cut them, and uh, play with those. A continuous shuffling machine, on the other hand, it sits up. It's big. It's generally black, and it looks like a giant snail. It's like shaped just like a snail. And what it is is they pay, uh, play with uh, a, a much smaller number of decks, and what it is is it continuously shuffles the cards while you're playing. So the dealer will deal out the cards to the table. Once that hand's done, they take them, they put them in the back, and then it's continuously shuffling and it spits out new cards. And now, while you might just think that it's bad if you're counting cards, it's actually bad for all players uh, in general. Yeah, uh, Blackjack is a negative expectation game, which means the casino has an advantage over you in, in all situations, unless, of course, you, you are a card counter, where on, sometimes you can turn it around and get an advantage over the casino. But whenever you play a negative expectation game, the faster you play, the more money you are expected to lose. So the problem with a continuous shuffling machine, studies have been, do been done on these machines, and they deal about 20% more hands per hour than uh, with, a, with a, a, a regular shuffling machine. So... The more hands you play, the more money you're expected to lose because, again, it's a negative expectation game. So, so you should avoid these, number one. If you were a card counter, you would never want to play it because you can't count cards against it. But number two, even for the average player, you're going to play more hands per hour, and you don't want to do that because uh, you're going to lose more money. So two basic reasons why you don't want to play against a continuous shuffling machine. Okay, number three on our list is don't hand your money directly to the dealer when you sit at the blackjack table. Yeah, and it's it's sort of just, if you've never played any table games before, this is just what you do at all table games. It's, it's uh, standard operating procedure for the casino. You don't hand your money to the dealer. You've got to put it uh, down on the table, and then the dealer picks it up off the table, and then they count it out very deliberately and space it all out so that the cameras can see everything. And then uh, they take the chips that you're going to be given, they put the chips on the table, and then you pick the chips up. It's they, they cut out the handing people, handing stuff to other people so that there's no like uh, collusion or anything between you and the dealer or something like that. Yeah, casinos are always a little paranoid about uh, cheating, it's whether it's uh, cheating on the part of a dealer 
or collusion between a dealer and a player. And uh, one thing they don't want to do is have the uh, dealers uh, uh, steal any chips. So it's interesting that uh, the uniforms that the uh, uh, dealers have, they have no pockets. So they can't slip a, a chip in there. And when the uh, dealer is done at blackjack, you'll see they, they always they clap their hands and go like this to show, show that there's no uh, chips being uh, taken from the table. So again, casinos are very paranoid about that. So when you sit at the table, just make sure you don't hand your money directly to the dealer. Just put it down, and the, and the dealer will uh, uh, count it out in front of it, in front of you, on the table, and in front of the overhead camera. Number four on our list is don't touch the cards. And this is another one that goes back to the casinos being paranoid that everyone is trying to rip them off. They think that if you're touching the cards, you're somehow marking them or anything like that. And uh, that, it, that this only applies in uh, blackjack games that are dealt out of a shoe. Uh, it's a little different for uh, hand pitch games, which I'll let Steve uh, go on about. Yeah, uh, in hand pitch, a sing, a single deck or double deck games, the uh, dealer will throw the cards to you right there on the table, and then you can pick them up. But one thing to do is only hold them in one hand. You're not allowed to hold them in two hands. Again, they're a little concerned that you, you might uh, be switching uh, uh, cards on them. So be sure that you only hold it in one, one hand. The other thing is don't move the cards over the edge of the table or, or, or down towards your lap because they don't like that, again, because uh, possible, uh, uh, you know, playing around with the cards, switching cards. So be careful of that. Number five on our list is don't touch your bet once the hand starts. And what we mean by once the hand starts is once the dealer starts dealing out the cards. And this goes back to that same theme about casinos always thinking everyone is trying to rip them off where they think that uh, if the hand has started and you're uh, getting your, touching your chips or putting your hand near your chips, that you're either trying to take chips away because you saw something bad in the first card or put more money out because you saw something good in the first card. And to just avoid this whole headache entirely from getting in trouble from the casino, just, just don't even touch your cards or touch your chips once it starts. Like Even if you, if you notice that your chips are a little off-centered off or on the edge of the circle, some people are anal and like to have their chips right in the middle. If the hands have has already started, just don't even bother touching it. Yeah, there was a famous case recently where an ex-NBA star uh, named Charles Oakley, if you want to Google it, he uh, evidently had changed his bet after the hand had started, and he did it several times. And uh, he did this in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan. He was accused of this, and uh, he was charged with several felonies. So it's something you want to be aware of. So don't touch your bet once the hand starts. Mm -hmm. Number six on our list is don't tell the dealer what you want to do. You have to use hand signals. Like if you want to hit, don't just say hit. If you want to stand, don't say stand. There's several hand signals you have to use. Yeah, if uh, you saw the uh, one of the Austin Powers movies when he was in Las Vegas, uh, you don't want to say hit me, baby. Uh, you want to use your hand signals. So... They are standard hand signals. If you want another card, you, you would tap your finger on the felt. Uh, if you want to stand, you would wave your hand over the uh, cards that you have there. If you want to uh, uh, split or double down, you would just put more money out on the felt. But again, um, don't, don't tell the, the dealer. And the reason they do this, uh, let's say you said, uh, you, you said hit me, and, and then the, the dealer gave you cards. Oh, I didn't say hit me. I said I wanted to stand. So, so they want to have a, a record of this. So, so by using your hand signals, it's, it's recorded on the overhead security cameras. So if there's ever a problem, they can go back and see what your intentions were by, by looking at what your hand signals were. Because there's no audio in those, it's just video. So it's, it's a security precaution for the casino. And it, actually, I guess it would protect you because if you ever had a problem and, and your signal was misunderstood, you could always go back to the tape and prove what you, uh, whether or not you wanted the card. So again, don't tell the, the dealer what you want, whether or not you want a card. Use hand signals. Number seven on our list is don't guess how to play your hands. Yeah, if you've ever heard us uh, talk about blackjack before or watched any of our other videos about blackjack, uh, we always mention what's called basic strategy. And when you hear that blackjack is a good game to play because it has a half a percent house edge, that's if you're playing your hands perfectly. 
Yeah, uh, basic strategy charts are derived from computer simulations of millions and millions of hands. And through these calculations, they, they find the best strategy for playing your hand in any given situation. Now, the uh, average person, uh, if they were to sit there and guess, they'd probably be given the, the house uh, closer to a 3% edge. But if you follow these basic strategy charts, and again, it depends on the number of decks used and the rules enforced in, in, in any particular game, but it's about one half of 1%. Now, and, and one thing to keep in mind, how good these basic strategy charts are, that even if you're a card counter, where, where you vary your bets based on the, uh, uh, you're tracking the high cards and the low cards, I and mean, there's a lot of high cards, it's better for you. So even as a card counter, you are using basic strategy about, probably about 80 to 90 percent of the time. They, they only deviate in rare situations when there's more high cards or more low cards remaining in the deck. So again, that should be a good indicator to you that it's really good to use basic strategy because even card counters use it most of the time. And now even if maybe you're going to Vegas soon and you don't have the, the time to commit the whole basic strategy to memory, uh, you can get it uh, on a little printed out card. We have them on our site on PDFs you can download. Uh, you can buy them on a lot of websites. Even most of the gift shops in the casinos have them. And uh, you can just keep that in your hand while you're playing and, and look, if you don't know how to play the hand, you can look down at it and figure it out. As long as you're not slowing down the pace of the game, the casino really doesn't mind. Yeah, but just keep, keep one other thing in mind, please, that the strategy will change depending on whether it's single deck or multi-deck and whether you hit soft 17 or stand soft 17. So like in our book, we have uh, six different charts. And actually, we also have those same six charts. You can download them for free on our website in the uh, Blackjack section of the AmericanCasinoGuide.com website. And the last thing on our list of eight things to never do at the Blackjack table is there's sort of a few things in here, and we've encompassed it all into one. And that's pretty much just don't be a dick. Yeah, you can find some nasty people at the Blackjack table. Uh, some, sometimes uh, it, it's a little intimidating for, for some people. There. First, first of all, they'd rather sit at their slot machine and not have to worry about any uh, table etiquette or interacting with other people. But sometimes if you sit there, then usually it's someone who knows basic strategy. Or and, thinks they know basic or strategy. They know because sometimes they are wrong. And, and, and you make a, a move that they don't approve with, they'll say, you know, why'd you hit that? Yeah, and uh, so some people at the blackjack table can be abusive, so, so just keep that in mind. And the next uh, sort of bit on this is uh, blame others for your losses. Like a lot of people will get pissed at the dealer uh, if they get a bad card. And, you know, it's, it's the old saying goes, don't shoot the messenger. And that's really what the dealer is, is they're just the messenger. They're not, they're not like they're using a machine to shuffle all the cards. They're just handing the cards to you in the order they're supposed to be dealt. It's not like they can choose which card they want to give you. So, I mean, it's, it's, they're just doing their job. You don't, you don't want to get mad at somebody for doing their job. Yeah, and the, and the other thing is sort of to go back to the, to the first one where the people try and tell you how to play your hand. A lot of times they, they will say, oh, well, well, you took the dealer's card, and, and if you hadn't done that, the dealer would have busted and we all would have won. But, you know, that, that person who's making that decision over there, they, they don't know what card's coming next. You don't know what card's coming next. So in reality, uh, uh, whatever that person does, in the long run, it doesn't matter. Um, because sometimes what they do will hurt you, sometimes what they do will help you, but you, you have a tendency, players have a tendency to remember what hurt them, and, and they forget when uh, some, something that the other person did that helped them. So, uh, and again, in the long run, there's a lot of people who disagree with this, but it's been proven that in the long run, it doesn't matter what other people at the table do because sometimes it will hurt you, sometimes it will help you. So don't be a dick at the table and start uh, abusing other people about their play. It's their money. Let them play whatever way they want. And another thing on that is that don't forget you're going to the casino to have fun. If you're sitting at the blackjack table and getting mad at the dealer and yelling at everyone sitting around you, it sort of defeats the whole purpose. Just remember that you go to the casino for entertainment purposes and that if you win money, that just happens to be a bonus. And that's it for our list of the eight things to never do at a blackjack table. Uh, don't forget to like uh, the video and subscribe if you want to see great other videos from us. Thanks again for watching and best wishes for good luck in the casinos. 
Don't forget that you can see more of our educational gambling videos on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash American Casino Guide.